Hi guys, thank you so much for viewing. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, my last video that I've done regarding life contracts. Boy, have I started something with that video. Okay, first of all, I'm going to leave the comments up because everything happens for a reason. We must remember that. And we must remember feedback, whether it's good or bad, is always a positive thing. It is an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity to look at ourselves within and see why we've done that behavior, whether we're the one commenting or we're the one receiving that comment. Okay. So today I'm going to tell you a little story about what's happened to me. Please know this is me being raw because I am only a human. I am still on this big learning curve myself where I'm still trying to work out what this life is about, what our past lives are about, what is heaven about, why to go stay here. I'm on this perpetually going around and around like a guinea pig wheel where I'm trying to work it all out too. So I put forward opinions, I put forward perspectives to make us think. And most importantly, the reason why I do it is to ultimately give us all the opportunity where we can self-develop and self-grow and to nurture ourselves to be the best person that we can be. Okay, that's the reason why I'm doing these videos. So I hope that you appreciate that bit first. Okay. So I'll tell you a little story about what happened. I received some negative com a comment, which is still there in my last video. So if you go to my video from two days before this one, you'll read the comment there. You can also read my comment back, the reply that I did. So as soon as I pressed that, I thought, wow, that should have been a video just there. But I left it. I was going to do a video yesterday. And every time I got ready to do my video yesterday, she was telling me, don't do it yet. Wait, be patient. So today I want to talk about her. Who is she? First of all, I don't ask who she is because I trust her. Whether she is my higher self, whether she's a spirit guide, which I don't think she is because I've got a spirit art guide. It's a big white owl. I don't know if she's an angel, an ascended master, she could be a representation of the Virgin Mary, Ma Muhammad, Buddha, etc. She could be God herself for all I know. But I don't question it because I accept her words for her words are the wisdom of who she is and what she represents. Okay. Anyone who has any sort of religious belief whether you're just somebody who knows the word Jesus, Muhammad or Buddha, or whether you're one of those Bible bashers who come around religiously locking on people's doors to that extreme, it doesn't matter where we are in that mix. The very fact that we believe in something more than what is our three-dimensional materialistic world is what matters inside us because it is what is inside us, our emotions, our characteristics that is what is important in heaven so in my what happened to me this morning I did a video two days ago and I got some really not good feedback and I always take that on board as an opportunity okay I don't ever say eh, and do knee-jerk reactions okay I don't do that so I got feedback the other day on my comment and I woke up this morning and I've got another email there saying comment on my video. That comment is there. You can go and read it. Okay. So I went outside having this knee jerk reaction because I am only human. Remember, I went outside with my morning coffee and I'm looking in the sky and I'm looking at all the clouds in the sky. And I said, for the love of God, why? Do people not see the message that I'm trying to portray here? Instantly, the whole sky went white. Not only the clouds, but even the blue between the clouds went perfect white that I could not see through. It was burning me, but it didn't burn. It was like heaven's 
whiteness. If you've read near-death experiences where they say it was burning white, but it didn't burn my eyes. The whole sky went into this brilliant white. And I heard her say, what did you just say? So I sat back in my chair. I got my coffee in my hand. And I looked up and I said, I just said, for the love of God. For the love of God. For the love of God. It's not something that we say as sarcasm when, for the love of God, why is my life going like crap? For the love of God, why did that person just get murdered? It's the love of God that we want to achieve, that we want in our soul. So we're a part of that magnificence and that grandeur and that excellence of who they are. Isn't that why you're watching this channel? Please answer yes. So I'm going to give us all a little gift today. I'm going to call her in. So she talks. I'll repeat what she says. If you want to come through me, please do. I don't generally ask them to come through me like channel. I don't like doing that because then that's me. My ego loses that capacity. But if you want to say some messages to people today, please say your words. So it's not just about me and my ego here. It's what she wants us all to learn. It's what God, Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus and all the other ascended masters. What is your message for the world? First thing we have to realize here is everything does happen for a reason. Every single thing happens for a reason. In my video the other day, I was talking about Hitler, the atrocities of what he did during World War II. How many people died at his hands and his commands? We cannot judge. We cannot assume why he did that. Because ultimately, ultimately that is our ego. And we must go into the perspective of the universe where time does not exist. And we look at eternity of our souls with the billions and millions and tens of lives that we've had. We don't know who we were during World War II. We may have been that Jew at Auschwitz. But then again, we may have been one of those soldiers working for Hitler where we were agreeing, where we were going along and we were proud of what he was doing. So we don't know what the perspective is as if people do bad things. Let's look at the Silence of the Lamb movie. You know, the guy who put people in the basement so they lose weight and then he can take their skin and make coats out of it. Why was he doing that? Ultimately, there are lessons here for all of us. And the big thing that we never ask is why. Don't ask why. But show that love of God. Thank God I am not that person. Thank God I've just had an opportunity to learn that these things happen to others. So I can be a better person who doesn't do those things. Whether it's some war crime atrocity right down to running a red light and everything that could happen in between thank god i've been put into these positions where i hear what other people say and it doesn't make me any less of a person so i sat out the back today and i said to the universe for the love of god And then I heard her say, by the grace of God. Or in another religion, it may be Allah's grace. What does that mean, guys? What does it mean by the grace of God? It means that we don't, ex we don't get offended by people's actions. 
We don't judge them. We don't put our emotions out there on our sleeves and we tell everybody else our own beliefs. We accept without judgment or accusations. Okay? We just allow everybody to do what they want for everything ultimately happens for a reason. Okay? We look at all these other things that are going on now. There are a lot of lies and deceit. There's a lot of war games being committed. There's a lot of atrocities being committed. But it's when we put our energy, which is our emotions, into those acts that we fuel those acts. So don't get emotional about hearing bad things happening to good people. Put your own emotions into what you can do to make you a good person who is better. And that is how we strive to win this war. Because as I've long said, this is a spiritual war that's been occurring for the past five years. It is a spiritual war. They want us out there hating. They want us judging. They want us so frustrated with our own mental health that we de deplete our high vibrations and we go into these lower vibrational vibes where we're so negative all the time. Don't allow that to happen. Be the best version of yourself through the love of God. Through the love of God. Look within yourself and answer what is it about you that makes you so good? Eight billion people on the planet. Why are you so special? What makes you so unique? What makes you stand out other than all those other eight billion people? Which brings me to the shirt that I'm wearing today. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if you watch the Marvel movies, Thor. But in one movie, Thor's a big, obese person. And I've got him on my shirt. He's big, he's obese. Look at him, holding his beer. But ultimately, Thor had to look at himself and answer one question. Are you good enough to hold the hammer? And his response is written on the back of my shirt. This is his response. I am still worthy. I am worthy. The more we tell ourselves how beautiful, loving, kind, generous, forgiving, forgiving we are. Then we don't look at these things like what happened in World War II. We don't look at the war crimes happening now. We don't look at what happened in other war zones. We don't judge. We don't accuse what happened because we're not in the shoes of those people to know the real stories. We don't know what their lives were about. We don't know what other life lessons they've got to learn. We don't know what other lives they've led that led them to that. Only concentrate on ourselves and lift ourselves up into this beautiful love of God. <sighs> that was my daughter sneezing, by the way. Bless you. You know, isn't it funny that my daughter hears me doing these videos? What a great thing to teach our children. She's 15, she hears my videos. How do you think she feels when I put myself into her perspective and I hear, I, I imagine myself sitting on her bed as a 15 year old and she's listening to her mother doing these videos and her mother's there saying, don't judge, don't accuse people, allow people to do what they want under free will. Don't judge, don't accuse because it's so negative. What sort of person is that making her? So think about that reflection, that mirror. Who do you want to influence in your life? Do you want to be portrayed as a person who's doing negative comments all over the shop? Or do you want to be out there earning that pride from others saying, damn, I want to be like her. 
Damn, I want to be like her. Tell you what happened, a little side story. I went down to my local shops the other day and the lady who I usually see there, she was really upset like she was crying. I said, what's going on today, Debbie? She said, oh my God, I got a formal complaint. This guy, was he was upset there was no toilet rolls. So he's taken it out on me and he's put in a formal complaint. I'm probably losing my job in a few days. I said, mate, that's not going to happen. I'm going to go home right now and tell them how great you are. Why did that guy complain? Was it her fault there's no toilet rolls? Was it her fault that he's so upset, he's confused, he's frustrated, he's angry? Was it all her fault But he took it out on her? He sat there and made her life hell just because he didn't like the position he was in. And ultimately, whose job is it to fix that job? It's his job to look at himself and say, my God, what's happening in my life? For the love of God, give me that grace where I can get through this process and still be a great person. But he hasn't used the grace of God or that love of God. He's gone to that extremely low vibration of negativity where he had to complain about someone just doing their job. So I wrote this email to my shop. And I told them all the things that I've seen about Debbie over the past seven years because I see her virtually two or three times a day. And I actually said in my email, I don't know this woman from a bar of soap. She's not a friend of mine. She's not a relative. It's She's just someone who works at your shop. But this is what I've seen she's doing. I want to give her that grace of God, that leniency. So you see that perspective that she's not a bad person. So what can we learn straight there? I got an email back from the shop and they said, oh my God, I'm going to show her your feedback. So there's that ripple effect now where Debbie's now going to see that there are people who appreciate her. There are people out there who want to strive to be like her. I don't know her from a bar of soap, but I've seen the dedication. I've seen the loyalty. I've seen the product knowledge of her pride of working in that shop. And that is so commendable actions. Why don't we share that with everybody? Geez, man, I don't know you, but geez, I'm proud of what you're doing today. How often do we do that in our lives? But we'll say, oh man, I hate you for that. Oh my God, you've just done a U-turn. I'm going, you all over the shop. How many times do we put negative feedback on people's posts on Facebook just because we're having an offended day? So the question today is, what sort of person do you want to be? Don't look at what other people do. Allow them to do it. Sit there and say, is that something I would do? And then we sit there and say, is this something God would do? Is this the act of an angel? Would an angel come down and condemn somebody for running a red light? Absolutely not. Would God sit there and say, you know what, Hitler, I don't like what you've done. You're not coming to heaven. God would never say that. Allah, in all his mercy, would never say that. So this is where we sit here and we say, do we want to be like heaven? Do we want to be like angels? Do we want to be better people or do we want to be in that mix out there of all these naysayer gossipers all over the shop being negative, abusing people, negative, offending and getting so frustrated and angry that they retaliated out to everybody else? I know which side of the fence I'm on. And it hurts when I get the negative feedback, but you know what? It's always an opportunity and it's always something to be grateful for. Because it shows me that we are all human. I can't say 100% of the times I'm a great person. Gosh, I say it all the time. My God, why'd that guy do that? Oh my God, why did that guy do that? Did you see what I just said? Oh my God, so I'm talking to God now. Why? I'm accusing. When we ask why, we're accusing. Why did he do that? I wouldn't do that. I, I reckon he'd be doing that instead. So now I've got this expectation, which is also negative. So we don't put our expectations into it, guys. We sit there and we say to ourselves, everything always happens for a reason. I don't need to know that reason. It's out of my control. I don't need to have an expectation. I don't need to judge. 
Because at the end of the day, when we do our life review, we judge ourselves. I sat there in my life review when I died. I bawled. Tears were falling everywhere with some of the stuff I've done. And it's tenfold. So imagine Hitler doing his life review. Every single person that died at Auschwitz. Look at all the children involved. He has to sit there and judge why he did that. Do you think that's punishment enough? I think yes, because it's tenfold compared to anything I personally could have done to him. So I don't need to cast that judgment. I don't need to cast that punishment. But I can always pass that leniency. I can always show that unconditional love of God to say, karma's going to be a witch to you someday. Because karma realigns the energies. And we don't have to be involved with that karmic response that happens to other people. We take ourselves out of that equation and say, as long as I'm doing the right thing and I try to be a better person and I'm striving to best be the best that I can be, I'm going to sit here and you can do whatever you like. I can give you my free advice. I can give you ideas and techniques and formulas and other things to try and make your life better. But ultimately, whatever you decide is your choice, right? But as long as I can come home at a night and I can sit here as a mother and I can say to myself, damn, I did the best I could today. I am proud of that. I appreciate that. I am so aware of who I want to be in my future. That's all we can strive to be. So if my last video did trigger you guys, because I know it triggered a lot of people, sit there and ask yourself, why did you get so energetically, emotionally attached? What triggered you to do that knee-jerk reaction where you had to comment or send me an email? Because I got a few of those too. Look at yourself, because I don't judge why you've done it. I will never blame, because I try not to be that person. <clears throat> I'm striving to be the best that I can be. And it's when we let go, when we release our hurts, our traumas, our pains from the past, and we send them over to God and we say, you know what, God, all this stuff in my past has happened to me. Let's just go there. I'll trigger you now. Look at a child. I had a lady come here one day. She said, oh, you don't know what, what my life is like. I was raped by my uncle when I was three. I said, so is that your fault? She said, oh, no, but every day is a pain. I said, so why are you hanging on to the pain of another person, what they did to you? You let him go. He's got his own karma. He's got his own life review where he'll punish himself. He's got to forgive himself. The only thing you can do about you right now is what you are creating in your own life based on what happened to you when you were three. This is how we take our own power. This is how we create this heart chakra of the love of God. And we turn this into the forgiveness. We turn this into the clemency of God. What is the clemency of God? He allows people to do whatever they choose. For he knows we judge ourselves when we pass over and it's inevitable <laughs> unless they do come out with some like mortality drug where we do become immortal but even then we've still got to have an end date. Nothing is eternal unless you're already one of those. So but how can we strive to be like them? We stand in their image, the image of God. We are in the likeness of God. We stand there and we say, what, do, what can I do today to make him proud? What can I do today that's going to make me feel that I'm like heaven, like an angel, like an ascended master, or even like my spirit guide? How many times do I say to people in readings, etc., where they say, oh, can you show me my spirit guide? I say, yes, but you've got to remember how patient they are. For they are allowing you to be on your path and when you go off path, they realign it and they put you into positions where you're guided back onto your life contract. 
patience is so lost in this time. No one has patience anymore. No one has compassion. No one has pride in themselves. They're angry, confused. So they're taking it out and retaliating it onto everybody else like Debbie at the shops. Do you think she needed a complaint against her because there was no toilet rolls on the pa- on the ro- on the shelf? She did not deserve that. So that's where we look at ourselves and say, what do I deserve? I deserve so much. And it's not up to the government to create it. It's not up to your bank to make it. It's not up to your employer to pay you that money. It's not up to your neighbours to be quiet tonight so you can have a good night's sleep and contemplate all the reasons why you're such a great person. The, the only person who makes us feel all that love of God is us. It beams out of our heart chakra and it emits to everybody else. And it inflicts them. And it's contagious like a pheromone. And then what happens? Everyone else starts being nice around you. Oh my God. That's what I share in these videos, guys. I'm not preaching. I'm not, well, I am an ordained reverend. If you didn't know that about me. But I'm not doing like preaching it down your throat. I'm just becoming awareness of who we want to be ultimately. Who do we want to be ultimately? Who do we want to be? Or should I say, what do you ultimately want to be? Or where do you ultimately want to be? Because there's two sides of the fence after we pass. We go to heaven or we go to hell. And and if you haven't watched my hell videos, we create that hell through our own past traumas. So the more that we hang on to the fact of, oh, I'm a Jew, you don't know what um, Hitler did to the Jews, we're hanging on to someone else's trauma and we're creating it as our own. So you disassociate from it. You say, what happened to you happened to you. It doesn't mean it's me. Look how many people over the world say, my God, look what you did to my grandparents. You, you, You massacred my whole race. Look at the um, North American Indians. You know, there's a lot of um, Indians still alive in America and they're so grudge-filled. You killed my grandparents. That happened to their grandparents. So why are you hanging on to all that hurt, pain and misery? Let it go and say, my life is my responsibility. I do not need, because needs are negative, I do not need to hang on to what happened to somebody else. I honour them. I am privileged to be in that heritage or culture. I have that patrianism, but it does not affect who I am in my life. Am I compassionate? Am I kind? Am I understanding? Am I most of all forgiving under the grace of God? Do I show love to everybody regardless of who they are and what they've done to others? Because ultimately we don't know our life lessons. And that's what I was trying to explain in that last video. Our life lessons. Sometimes it is for us to learn them. But other times we're here to teach them lessons to someone else. People come into our lives to teach us a lesson. And then they leave and you think, wow, that person was only in my life for three months. But damn, I liked his determination could be something that easy so it's when we look at ourselves guys and this is a doozy we look at ourselves we self-analyze ourselves and we say to ourselves am i proud of what i did today when i swore at that guy down doing that illegal u-turn am i proud of that because i've done that myself because i'm only human and i sit there and i say why did i do that for i'm so sorry but it's not to me because he was the one that was doing it So I don't have to call him out and say, hey, mate, I don't know who you you are, but I'm sorry for just yelling at you. But it's it's our opportunity, so we don't do it again to the next person. They might be running that red because they've got a medical emergency. Look at ambulances. They're all going crazy at this point because there's so many people getting sick. So don't judge what people do. Don't judge. We've all got free will. Everybody has aligned 
themselves through their life contract to do what is in their lives. So don't judge other people for what they do or say. And that's what I was trying to say in that video. When we look at Hitler, he obviously had some good qualities because Ava Brown loved him. He didn't tie her to the bedpost and say, you're now my prisoner. She followed him willingly. So she saw something in him. So it's all about perspective. It's all about allowing people to do what they want. We don't have to condone it. We don't have to agree with it. I don't agree with what Hitler did. Please don't ever think that. Okay? But it just means I don't want to be like that. Okay? So next time you're going to leave negative feedback on whatever, ask yourself, is this my knee-jerk reaction? Am I having an emotional attachment to this issue? And most of all, does that person deserve it? Or is this an issue for myself to work out? Okay? Because most times it's number four. It's our own issue to work out. Why did I get so offended to the point where I have to write a comment and abuse them? This is all about psychoanalysts. Analyzing ourselves to be better people. That's what I try and teach in my videos. I teach about heaven. I teach about near-death experience. I teach about ghosts and spirits. I teach about spirit, um, spirit guides and all these other things to let us know that this three-dimensional world is only a blink in the soulistic alignment of our, of our lifespan. We're eternal souls. And by the love of God, or by the grace of God, we can get through this life as long as we say, I did my best. I strived to do my best. And I also strived to do the best by others. By showing that compassion, by showing that grace, by showing that leniency, that clemency, and most of all, that forgiveness. My ex-husband killed me for God's sake. How easy was it for me to forgive him? Extremely easy. If I saw him on the street, I'd run up and hug him. Because he was only doing what he could do. I've taken myself outside of that emotional connection. And I now look at his life and his issues, his grudges, his regrets that are going to lead to that loophole when he passes over. And I feel sorry for him through that compassion and through that grace of God. Nothing I say, guys, is about my ego. It's always them. They're striving me to be my best. So talk to them. All you've got to do is what I do. Hey, you here? And I listen. Because I just heard yes. And it's like inside my head. Are you here? Have you got a message? What do you want me to do today? And I get, my, I get words in my head and I hear them. I just heard, hurry up because you've got people coming this afternoon. So now I know people are coming here this afternoon. Trusting in them, praying, meditating... Most people, when they pray, they say, oh, my God, help me. How often do we sit there and say, you know what, God, I love you. Thank you so much for being who you are. I just want to appreciate you at this point. How many times do we pray and actually give them thanks, give them appreciation and just say, you know what, I'm right today. I want to make sure that you're okay too. Or do we... I need this. Oh, my God, where's my money for next week's bill? I need this today. Help me. My, my mother's sick. Oh, my God, pray for this person. Pray for that person. Do this, do that. That's what we're really saying. But by the grace of God and by the love of God, start living what the angels would do. What would the angels do? I ask myself that every day when I see something happen. 
I said, what would Jesus do in this position? What would Jesus do in this position? Man, it makes my life easier. Because I strive to be like that. And I do have my fallacies. I do have my times where I go, oh my God, Linda, you just failed, failed, failed again. So we're all on a learning curve. None of us are perfect. But keep coming around. Keep watching my videos. Because ultimately, that's what I'm trying to teach. So I hope you all have a good day. And I hope that you got something from this. Please comment below if you've got any feedback. <laughs> like or dislike the video. <laughs> Email me, my link's below. And subscribe because ultimately you're here for a reason. You want to be a better person, right? Hopefully we all get there. Okay, bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.